Hey everyone, how's it going? Cell here. Been a while, but welcome back to episode 10 of the Melvor Idol Random Adventure series. Yep, I didn't forget about it. It's been two weeks, but I've just been playing Path of Exile and making some YouTube content for that on my other channel. So I haven't been focusing as much on this between that and a couple of other things, but have been making some progress. Not two weeks worth of progress, I would say, because I keep forgetting I need to switch activity before being gone for like a day or half a day. So you get situations where I'm like, okay, let me make some crafting potions before I go back to making dragon hide bodies. And then I make like an hour of potions while I'm gone for 10 hours. So some losses in that regard, but big things since last episode for sure. First of all, the township update is here. I've decided with some input from the Iron Nation, of course, that uh, the rules will be sticking. Township is going to be unlocked last after everything else and is not in the random pool of things we can spin the wheel for. So basically nothing is changing in that regard. You can get some new slash different stuff from Township now, but if slash when we get into that, it'll be after other things. So, beyond that, personal character-wise upgrades. Uh, first of all, finished out the Orpheat Signet Ring by getting the other half of it from Skilling, I believe. Mostly been doing a lot of Green Dragon Hide. See, I have almost 25 mil here, which I'll get into in a second. But in addition to that, I've also unlocked the highest tier of auto eat, which I guess can be demonstrated in here. So higher threshold for eating and higher efficiency as well. And I unlocked that one first because I was planning to do some more combat. So I'm up to level 96 from 89 before and want to do that just to raise the level cap a little bit. It kind of feels like a waste in some regard to be like skilling when you're at your cap, especially when there's combat I could be reasonably doing. Uh, this is maybe on the less reasonable one, but I went through and did some of the lower level dungeons and unlocked pets. I think I already had the graveyard pet, but now I have the chicken coop pet, the bandit base pet, spider forest pet, and the deep sea ship pet. Uh, kind of in the opposite order. I just I did a bunch of deep sea ship because I want the rewards. And then I was like, all right, I have a decent stack of them. I want to open those on video. So let me do spider forest. And then just kept going down really from there. So yeah, that's been it pretty much for the most part. I don't remember if I had the elite amulets of defense before. No, I must have because I opened some uh, chests for that. That's why I did the under graveyard, I remember now. So, yep, signet ring is the, the big things in ter big thing in terms of both skilling and combat, really. I don't really have a good ring at the moment. 1% uh, damage reduction from silver diamond ring is good, but if I'm not in danger of dying or don't need the damage reduction, this is 10% chance to, or sorry, 5% chance to double loot from slain monsters or thieving, which we don't have unlocked yet, and 10% chance to double skilling resources. So, for example, between crafting and, or between that and the crafting potion and uh, I think a mastery benefit. Okay, maybe not. Um, up here? Nope. <laughs> Hang on, where is the rest of this? Come, oh, it must be astrology, right. So I've done quite a bit of astrology as well. I guess that's a good, seg good segue. I can't even speak today. What's new though, right? Up to 99 mastery on the crafting and prayer constellation. Only picked up the crafting stuff, of course, because I don't have prayer unlocked. Saving the stardust for other things. Some of which I guess could be herblur. <laughs> Probably should have done this earlier. Uh, sure, I guess I'll just max out both of these since they're not doing anything else right now. All of these incremental gains being made is 
pretty nice, especially from astrology. Have things uh, racking up over time. And I guess I'm going to switch to astrology for a second here because I want to do a couple things. Nope, didn't want to equip that. It's not one of the things I want to do. I want to sell off all those stuff. Uh, I guess I'm going to sell mode for this. Get rid of those, clear out a load of bit of space, and then start opening stuff. I guess the egg chest is probably the one I should open first. The pet from here is like 1% GP from monsters, I think. Again, very tiny, but I was like, might as well knock it out. So I guess I'll open this. 230,000 feathers, bunch of raw chicken. The raw chicken can be used for potions. Guess maybe I'll save those, but feathers, they are more expensive to buy in the shop. They're eight a piece versus selling them for two, but the bank space is worth more. So I'm gonna sell those and then See, a bayonet chest, some of these I already have. Uh, I don't think I have room for everything there. Pirate booty, I think I have most things in here actually, so I can go ahead and open these. Looking for silver and gold bars for the most part. Okay, plenty of gold bars, More, two more rapiers. I don't remember the rate on this, it's like a hundred something, but my luck on that has been pretty good so far. All right, next batch, I'm just gonna do like a bulk sell between each of these, I guess. It'd be much neater if I could, you know, open them all at once, but I don't wanna spend money on bank space right now. I guess I could buy a couple, actually. All right, there we go. Like a mill down for a handful more bank space. Is that enough to, yes, okay. All right, from the earning 300, another ancient sword, another rapier. No more tortures, so I got a second or a third one, can't remember. Close to a thousand gold and silver bars from each of those, that's pretty nice. I am now realizing though that I probably want to keep doing that for a little while unless I unlock smithing, which, you know, I could. I am planning on unlocking a skill here shortly, but really want to upgrade these. I guess I'll do this right away, 750 gold bars, but like that's gonna leave us without all that many once again. Yeah, 1100. So as we ramp things up and get into the higher tier stuff, I don't remember if the volcanic cave drops dragon equipment, I think it might. Uh, let's see here. Yep, drops some dragon equipment, not all of it though. So potential use for that there and the ancient stuff still takes gold and silver bars to upgrade, so I will be in dire need of those, hopefully shortly. If I am in need of them, that's a good thing, so. That is gonna be the plan here to tackle the volcanic cave pretty shortly. I'm working up towards a combined hit points and damage reduction threshold along with the max tier of auto -E. The main reason I got that now, instead of waiting after the skill, is to potentially clear the, the volcanic cave. Actually, yeah, let me go back there because I just need to see the scan. Yeah, silver and gold bars commonly from this. So if I can get to the point of being able to idle this, which I think I am there or just around the corner, then I can do that instead of deep sea ship. All right, continuing on with, let's go bandit chest this time. I think they'll all open at once. Yep. That is a ton of arrows. I'm happy with that. <laughs> One ancient longbow. Uh, I guess rounded down, you would only expect one in the amount that I've done, but I am glad to have gotten that. I don't know what the level lock this, first of all. What is the level requirement in this? 70, okay. That is very solid because my previous best range weapon was the magic short bow. Let's check it out. 2.6 attack interval, 61 attack bonus, 45 strength. This one's going to be slower because the longbow at 3 seconds, but 85 attack, 110 strength bonus. Um, so, yeah, significant accuracy and strength bonus difference there. So I can go ahead and get rid of this now since we are 70 range. And also has a special attack. 
five percent unavoidable, two hundred percent max hit. So five percent of the time, that is pretty amazing. And the rest of the time, it's still you know the best thing we've got. Unfortunately, it does have the problem of being two-handed. So there, like you can't use a shield. Has damage reduction implications, but. We could start looking at, now that we have that and a decent supply of arrows, and we can get some ammo preservation pretty shortly, I imagine. Could look into doing a Hall of Wizards, potentially get some runes from there and some other places, uh, combat area stuff, and look into doing some magic as well. I don't think it's going to be efficient to do any magic until we can actually use runecrafting, but I guess that's something I'll have to check out. So I think I'm going to sell the dragon arrows and the remaining bows, but keep all the other arrows since we have so many of them. And last up is the spider chest. Uh, right, I forgot this one has a ridiculous amount of potential items you can get, and I don't have that many of them. So this is going to be fun. All right, screw it. Five more bank spaces, 1.4 mil. It's gonna take us pretty close to the line of the amount of money we need to unlock a skill, but <laughs> anything to save my sanity a little bit from this. Couple more amulets of looting here. Does that put us up to four? So we need a fifth for the loot container stacking, which is like essentially just an upgraded Amulet of looting for the most part, and yeah, there's the fifth one. Probably get a couple more even. Uh, oh, right. Uh, Ranger boots. Forgot that was a thing. That's ammo preservation. We can't upgrade these, can we? Yeah, so minus damage reduction there relative to other things, but you know, there's not like craftable, good craftable, I should say, uh, boots and helmet. So the Ranger boots and hat are supposed to fill that role, I guess from the spider forest, at least in like those early mid levels. And I think I'm going to open the rest of these myself and then I'll report back if something interesting happens because this is a lot of bulk selling of things. All right, there we go. Ended up with seven pairs of boots and five hats. So if we train range, the ammo preservation will be nice, like I said, and could potentially use it elsewhere, assuming we don't need the damage reduction. And now it's time for everybody's favorite time of the series, to spin the wheel. And just to showcase 25 mil to unlock a skill, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the wheel. There we go, you can audit the list on the right if you're so inclined. And let's spin it. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, that actually is decently interesting, actually. In a couple of ways. <laughs> Let's go unlock cooking. All right. Cooking, 25 mil, down the drain, and to showcase this, 50 mil for the next one. So, <laughs> every skill we unlock that does not aid us in making more money is pain. And I think this might be one of them. It is useful, like I said, to some degree, but that degree is fairly limited compared to normal. So in the shop, you can unlock some furnace upgrades and such. You need fire making levels for that. and resources that are otherwise hard to come by. So fire making and smithing levels plus resources you normally get from wood cutting and smithing. Yeah, that's uh, gonna limit the effectiveness of our cooking. We can still cook quite a bit of stuff. Like I have a ridiculous amount of beef still from when I was slaying cows in the early days should have equipped this for, yeah, an extra bank space there, but let's see. If we look at the milestones, we can do some things like 
strawberry cupcake, for example, where the recipe requires something we can farm, strawberries, and things we can buy from the shop, like flour and cream, basically. So that is a potential avenue for more active food processing. I think my food is doing fine at the moment. So this may come into play more so when I'm doing like more active combat and uh, just chewing through those resources a little more. Especially if I did something like uh, Dragon's Den. I was considering doing this for the Ancient Set and Twin Exiles in case those would have been good for some reason. Uh, I don't think they are, but the armor would have been the primary focus, except Dragon Breath will chew through my food supplies like nothing else, like I mentioned before when I was doing Black Dragons for my uh, Black Dragon Head armor. So that opens up the possibility of even like, whoop, um, going to the Dragon Valley and killing some Black Dragons in the future once I can actually get my cooking up and get some better food production going. Like even now I have 8,300 strawberries and I don't know what sort of bonuses we can get from astrology. Let's see, where is cooking? Okay, it's decent high level. Change to double items, cooking interval, both great. Might as well get the skill XP as well whenever I start doing that. Uh, I don't know what the max one is. I think it might be food healing efficiency, so that'd be good as well to top this off at 99. Um, and then if I can get chance to preserve resources, if I can finish off the crown, get the actual crown without the jewel, put the jewel in it, that's chance to preserve resources, either 10 or 25%. And yeah, the cooking production could go off. So definitely some ideas there. I don't know if there's anything I'd use watermelon for in here. Uh, I'm not seeing anything, and nothing comes to mind in terms of remembering having seen something before. It's mostly fish, of course, because, you know, you fish food, you cook it. Beef pie. Now that's something I should take a look at. Um, Beef-related things, since I have so much of it. Okay, yeah, beef pie looks decent, actually. Um, pineapple heal pineapple. <laughs> Watermelon heals three sixty. Supposedly a beef pie. Hang on a minute. I need to cook. Wait a minute. Furnace required. I can't even. Oh no. I hadn't even considered this. <laughs> this is horrible. Yeah, I can't cook like anything but the most basic crap because I only have a fireplace. Okay then. Uh, I guess even so, keeping that in mind, beef, once I can successfully cook something, slash if, uh, what's my success chance? 71%. Heals for 500 versus watermelons 360. So I was going to say beef pie is actually really good because level 17 cooking, it heals for 240 base game, which is 2400 in adventure mode. It's way better than watermelon. You're not really supposed to just eat the, the stuff you farm in such vast quantities, I think. I mean, maybe later on, if you've got millions of apples, like some people, then you can be comfortable doing that. But the food has been a relatively slow trickle in, and we only have the stockpile that we do because it's been so long since I've done any real combat. But again, it heals so little that I could easily blow through what I have right now. So I don't know if I will continue with making just, you know, beef. <laughs> uh, I wish this was kind of broken down by stuff you can make 
in the various stations here. But I'm guessing most things like like fish and such are going to be made here, but everything else is going to be in the furnace or the pot, which is unfortunate. I completely forgot about that. All right, episode's running long, but one last thing to do here. I think I'm going to do the initial run of the Volcanic Cave. Seen at 33% damage reduction. Calculator's telling me I need 34% at my current level of hit points to fully idle. So I'm gonna do one run and get the Fire Cape, which gives 2%. That'll put us at 35 in total. And then I can fully idle from then on, and I'll probably do some Volcanic Cave between this episode and next. So let's give it a shot. I definitely had less potions than I thought I did too. I apparently blew through all of my melee accuracy potions, so I'll have to make some more of those before I do any idling of this. Alright, heading into the final boss here. I want to stay above about 7,000 HP, just in case anything weird happens. That's the range at which he could theoretically double swipe and take us out. So, yep. Stay above that for the razor sharp claws. I guess there I probably could have avoided eating because I knew he was using dragon breath. Same deal here. 37% chance to hit, not ideal. Here's what we'll eat up. Dragon breath. Etc. Guess I don't need to show this whole thing, but that's my general methodology. Hang on a minute. I'm going to trust the game more than the calculator here. My heart rate threshold is 3440, which is more than 3431. So I should just be able to idle this, even without the fire cape. And there we go. We got lore, and we got a fire cape. Let's equip that. Show off the stats, some defensive bonuses, 2% damage reduction, and some melee strength. Pretty nice. I think the Obsidian Cape still has its uses, uh, wherever we need defense or don't need the damage reduction, I guess, for the higher chance to evade, but let's crack open the first elite chest as well. 77 gold bars, okay. I'll take it. Like I said, we'll need plenty of those. Might as well read this. Talks about some of the lore stuff. Uh, already read through this. I'm not going to do that like on video or whatever, but then that can be sold and accessed from the lore menu down here in the future. So that's going to be it for this one. I think what I'm going to do is jump straight back into idling some volcanic cave, keep an eye on my food usage for like an hour or two, probably forget and use it all and die and lose all my stuff. Hopefully not, but <laughs> if I am using a ton of food, I'll look into doing something else. Oh, I was going to make potions. That's what I was going to do. Let's go ahead and do that first. And yeah, like I've already said 17 times already, do some more Volcanic Cave. And next video, we'll do a big opening. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then. Peace.